The gymnastic season begins with the Super Six. Alabama is the team to beat. The Crimson Tide confident coming off a phenomenal 2003 season in which they finished as the national runner-up. This year led by standout Ashley Miles, Bama has its sights set higher. Yes, this year it's on the title. SEC rival Georgia looks to defend its Super Six Challenge title. The Gym Dogs, however, want more, much more. They have six seniors who plan out closing their careers with their first national championship. The Florida Gators are also in the mix. Their top 10 finish a year ago sent a message that the Gators are for real and a force to be reckoned with. Tonight, these three favorites, plus Oklahoma, Oregon State, and Denver, battle for the Super Six title. The season begins next. Coleman Coliseum here in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, getting ready for NCAA gymnastics. Tonight, we're expecting a crowd of 10,000 strong for the Super Six Challenge. Hi again, everybody. I'm Chris Marlowe, and welcome to the unofficial start of the 2004 women's collegiate gymnastics season. And what a way to kick it off, the Super Six Challenge, the most prestigious regular season meet in the country. Our field, as usual, is star-studded. Six teams ranked in the top 20. Number two, Georgia. Number three, Alabama. Number seven, Florida. Rounding it out, three teams that want to be Oregon State, Oklahoma and the University of Denver. Very happy to have working with me Olympic medalist of yesteryear, Kathy Johnson Clark. Whenever Georgia and Alabama get together in anything, it is special. This is a great rivalry. Even when they hate each other, they love each other <laughs> because they get each other so pumped up for every season, year after year, to compete with each other. They were second and third at nationals last year. They're ranked second and third going into this season. And this year is no different. They're packed full of talent. These teams between the two of them have done it all. They have so many national titles, individual titles, team titles, SEC titles. And Alabama last year came in second with a team full of freshmen. Now they've got some experience and they look really ready to compete right now. George, on the other hand, they have 18 gymnasts on their squad, six of them seniors, and that's the amazing thing. These seniors don't have a team championship. They have everything else, but they are so fired up because they don't want to leave this school until they leave with a team national championship and a ring on their finger. Lots of honors, but no national championships at the moment. Florida is a program on the rise under second-year head coach Ron Defane. This team can do it. They've got a lot of talent. I have no doubt that Ron Defane will continue to do amazing things with this program. She was a great gymnast herself. She's very focused. She's an excellent coach, and she's trying to form this team. She's recruited some of her own athletes now. We're going to see a lot of freshmen on the Florida team today, so as anybody knows, it's hard to say how that will go. But as this team builds under Rhonda Fain's guidance, it's going to be a great team. All right. Could one of the dark horses break through Oklahoma, Oregon State, or the University of Denver? We will find out. In the first rotation, however, Alabama and Georgia, they are ready to do battle. It's coming up next. Welcome back to the 2004 Super 6 Challenge set for the first rotation. Georgia on vault, Alabama on bars, Oklahoma on beam. The University of Denver starts on floor, Oregon State and Florida with a bye. All right, we're going right to the bars. We start with Alabama's star, Ashley Miles. She's 5'7", a sophomore from San Antonio, Texas, and she can fly. Absolutely. This is a great event for Alabama, and as I said in the opening, Alabama really looks more meat-ready than they do usually this early in the season, and I, I think it's because they get a full team of freshmen. Now they're still one of the youngest teams in the nation but they have more experience, they took a shorter break, came in really wanting to be at their top. Ashley Miles, very consistent for head coach Sarah Patterson. Patterson now in her 26th season with four national championships. She's the first female coach to ever be inducted into the Alabama Hall of Fame. And one thing you have to say about both Georgia and Alabama, regardless of who they have on their team, they have strong programs. They've figured out how to get this trance, you know, into college. 
Kovic and doing very well at the collegiate level. She can really crank on this event. She is so strong, uses much more strength and dynamics on this event. But whoa! Take that handstand, almost went over. We're seeing much more parity in collegiate women's gymnastics now. The teams are much more even in terms of their level. Oh, that's a shame. That's the kind of mistake you see early in the season where you're not quite in routine shape. She got a little tired toward the end. There's a nice big release move. And just couldn't quite pull this around. Double layout. Going for more difficulty now. Just couldn't quite get her feet underneath. Very confident a year ago, 24 of 28 routine. She hit a 9.9. So continue with Alabama on the bars. Brittany Como, a 5'3 freshman. Trained at Elite Gymnastics in Baton Rouge. A five-time national qualifier. She's ready to go. It's going to be an interesting competition. That's what most of the coaches told me. When it's this early in the season and they do have a lot of freshmen, it's hard to predict how they'll react in the competition, how they'll warm up. And it takes several meets into the season to really get the endurance up to, to complete full routines. Six women compete. They use the five best scores. So if you have a stumble, like Ashley Miles, you want to be able to throw that out and have five good performances following her. We can talk to Nebraska about that. Last year's national, they had the highest score in the preliminaries, but then in the finals, they had two falls in one event, dropped them completely. Miles scores a 9.3. Ashley Miles a 9.3, so obviously, Pamela would like to drop that one. Very nice. Perfect height and distance. Judges are really looking for all these handstand moves to hit directly in vertical. Anytime they're a little bit short, they don't do that pirouette right on top of the bar. Good landing. There would be a slight deduction if they're not right in that vertical position in their handstand. A lot more handstands now to hit. That was the best part of the routine, just perfect distance where she could reach out, arms perfectly straight, double front dismount, legs a little bit apart and slightly staggered on the landing, but gets Alabama back on track. Solid routine for Brittany Como. So Georgia starts on vault. Here is Ashley Miller, 5'4", sophomore from Broadhead, Pennsylvania. When I spoke with Suzanne before the competition, I mean, she has 18 gymnasts that she can just play with this lineup. They're about nine deep on every event. And so she really wanted to get her freshmen into the competition early in the season to get them some experience and then rely on the upperclassmen later in the season. Jamie Ackerman got a 9.775 to lead off. Smith right behind her got a 9.75. So now the third woman in the rotation, Ashley Miller. Como got a 9875. Very popular vault in collegiate gymnastics. It's a Luchenko with a full twist, worth a 10.0. It had been upgraded about two years ago, upgraded it to a 10.0. So many of the gymnasts are opting to do this vault. It's a good one to really try and get a stuck landing. You see the landing much longer, right as you drop it in. She over rotates and takes a big step. Miller in her first uh, vault a year ago got a 9-8 in her Super 6 debut. We'll give you her store, score in a moment. Here is Marlene Stevens, and what a story she is. She missed the entire season a year ago with an Achilles tendon injury. She has just come back. She was a first-team All-American in 2002. Miller got a 9-7, and here goes Stevens. This must feel really great, getting back into competition after such a long layoff. Beautiful vault in the air. One of the best Yurchenko fulls in collegiate gymnastics. Nice height. 
Not a perfect landing, but again, considering the injury she's coming back from, that will be the last thing to really come back. Being able to nail those landings because you really have to drill those feet into the mat. She's got to be a little bit protected. Two years ago, she was the NCAA vault champion. She still says that it hurts a little bit here and there, but she is a wonderful re-addition to this Georgia Gym Dog team. So Marlene Stevens, the senior from Houston, Texas, out all of last year. And now we move to Ashley Kupetz, the freshman from Gaithersburg, Maryland. Her sister Courtney, of course, the USA Gymnast of the Year a couple of years ago, world champion on bars. How's Ashley on ball? Very good gymnast, completely different than Courtney. She's very, very on, strong Ashley. and powerful. Come on. You see good speed. Pretty big deduction on that. She wanted more lift Woo. off of the horse. You really have to time your block and get the exact position as you come into the horse, and it's a more difficult position to achieve on that type of ball. And that's the huge deduction right there. Giant, giant step forward. We can tell you Marlene Stevens got a 9.875, so four outstanding vaults so far for Georgia. We'll see what Coupets gets. So Georgia off to a great start on vault. Suzanne Yachlin, of course, is the head coach for Georgia. Jay Clark, Julie Ballard Clark, the assistant coaches. And of course, Doug McGavin, you can't leave him out. He coaches these gymnasts on vault and does an extraordinary job with their technique and using their talent. He is a wonderful addition to this equation. Chelsea Bird is up next, the senior from Little Rock, Arkansas. She was Southeastern Conference co-athlete of the year. The Southeastern Conference vaulting champion. So Georgia getting better and better as they move down the lineup. She is just a fantastic gymnast. Good, strong, all around, very solid. Pretty in the air. She's in Yachlin, very low key here. So far. <laughs> has beautiful form in the air. Look how tightly she squeezes her legs together. Toes are pointed throughout the whole ball. And just a tiny step back. Coupette's got a 9-6-2-5. Coupette's 9-6-2-5. Let's go back to the bars, Alabama. Marie Bayer, the sophomore from San Jose, California. She was a first-team All-America a year ago. She finished eighth in the NCAA championship. She's good. Her swing is so long on this event. Beautiful toe point. Details sometimes make a routine special. I think Alabama is usually noted for the nice form. Oh no, completely oh. off. I think she just tripped over her hand on the pirouette, unfortunately. She goes for the pirouette. Yep, her hand caught the bar as she turned and couldn't finish the pirouette. So Alabama struggling a bit in their opening rotation on bars. They're gonna have to count a fall. Remember, Miles stumbled early. And now Bayer having some problems. The swing's just a little bit sluggish. That might be a beginning of the year thing that they can work out as the season goes on. It just wasn't very crisp as she went to make that pirouette. Her hand caught the bar. Her fingers caught the bar. And then she couldn't lift it any higher. The Georgia Gym Dogs on ball outstanding. Chelsea Bird gets a 9-9-2-5. They drop the low score of Coupets and they finish with 49.025. So Georgia off to a hot, uh, hot start. And back to the bars, Alabama, Gina Rice, the sophomore. She's 4'10 from Longwood, Florida. And she is setting up. Alabama really needs some production right here. Gina enters her final year of collegiate gymnastics. She has had an extraordinary career so far. Many, many highs. 13-time All-American. 
Pick up the score for Marie Bayer. She had a 9-2-2-5, so they want to throw that one out. Miles stays with a 9-3. Bayer is out, depending on what happens with Rice. If Rice is cooking, they'll keep her. Well, she's been cooking. She continues. This is the type of gymnast that gymnastics is so easy to her. She's extremely talented. And the assistant coaches, Dana Duckworth, said that but she can do it in her sleep. She's just that type of thing. So up, missed that handstand a little bit. Really wanted to hit in the vertical position. Very, very clean. And boy, is she pulling everything together in her life, doing well in school. Gorgeous. Very, very nice dismount. Interesting double back. There's just an ease about her. She's very relaxed, very happy, and, and it's coming easily to her. Her mother, Joan, was a 1972 Olympian, so she learned from a great one. Georgia off to an outstanding start. Alabama trying to stay with it. Gina Rice will have more. Rotation two is next. Johnson Clark, I'm Chris Marlowe. Welcome back, Georgia, after one rotation leading, followed by Denver. Alabama struggled a bit on bars. They figured to score higher, and Oklahoma. We're set for the second rotation. And we're going to start with the University of Denver, ranked 18th in the country. They're called the Pioneers, and they come from the Sun Belt League. Their head coach, Melissa Kutcher Reinhardt, is expecting a baby due any day. She did not make the trip. So John Figueroa and Carl Leland are the co-coaches in this meet and splitting the duties. Right. Very exciting time for all of them. Said they wanted to say hello to their coach and. John Figueroa on the left, Carl Leland on the right. They are in charge. Figueroa, you'll see him mostly on bars and vault. Leland on floor. How about this? She's competed in every single meet for three straight years. Only twice in her whole career did she not compete in the all around. There goes Emily Bankhead. She's been amazing for the Pioneers. Very nice ball, very clean in the air. Not one of the most difficult balls being done, but nicely So Denver, one more look. They had a great rotation on floor to start out, took advantage of Alabama having troubles on bars. Edge ahead of them, she opens out, pretty good landing. It's valued okay. at a 10.0. Let's go over to the balance beam, where Alabama has been scoring well. Reeser and De La Jose with good scores. This is Shannon Rosick, the junior from the Woodlands, Texas. They're really coming back strong on this event, doing exactly what they needed to do after having two errors on bars. And it's what a strong team, an experienced team does. Kicks back up. It's tough, and they did just that so far. They're doing extremely well, hitting all the routines. One advantage of competing at home, not only do you have the support, obviously, of your home crowd, very accustomed to this arena and this balance beam. And then you need to pull things together. It's a nice position to be in. Double twist. Another solid routine. That's Brian Rochilla, one of the assistant coaches for Alabama, giving her a high five. They also are very fortunate to have one of their former gymnasts, one of the Finest gymnasts of Alabama, Dana Dobransky, now Duckworth, working with them as a volunteer coach, doing an excellent job. Very, very clean gymnastics. So far, four solid scores for Alabama on beam. So Sarah Patterson, happy.
happy with the rebound after the poor performance on bars in the first rotation. So we're going to stay with the balance beam. The sophomore Marie Bayer is up next. She was the second team All-American a year ago. That means she's pretty darn good. Explain how All-America works in gymnastics. Well, there's first team All-American and second team All-American. Yeah. First team All-American is earned during the finals right. at the NCAA championships. Second team top eight. Top, I'm not sure of the top of, of the number, but the second team All-American are chosen um, during the preliminaries. They can place in the preliminaries in the top. So you have two tiers. Quite an honor, a goal for many of the collegiate gymnasts. And getting harder and harder to come by <laughs> as collegiate gymnastics just every year gets better and better. More great gymnasts coming into the sport, into the collegiate field. Reeser got a 9.825, De La Husi 9.825, Pierce 9.725, Rosick 9.775. So Bayer trying to keep it going. She's the fifth woman in the rotation. Remember, they take five of the six scores. They throw the lowest one out. Excellent scale, beautiful flexibility. Very poised, this Alabama team, on this event. Showing a lot of confidence, very smooth. That gets you some tens, some high tens. All right, Alabama rebounding. We'll take a short break. We're coming back. We'll continue with the second rotation after this. Crowd here at the Coleman Coliseum in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. One of the hot spots in American collegiate gymnastics. 2004 Super Six Challenge. The head coach for Alabama is Sarah Patterson. Co coaches with her husband, David Patterson. And the final performer on balance beam, and it's Gina Rice. Very strong all around her. I particularly love her on balance beam. Though she's very, very pretty. I think she inherited a few genetic traits from her mom, who was gorgeous on balance beam. She has 13 career All-America honors, the fourth most in Alabama history. So she's moving up. <laughs> Bayer got a 9.875, so all hits for Alabama. All they need to do is get Reese down. And she can improve the score if she can hit big. Oh, oh that. She's warming up so well. And it just shows you how fickle the balance beam is. It's slight, just slightly off. And end up disastrous. Whereas on the other event, you might be able to make some adjustments and nobody ever knows you were slightly off, but in being very hard to hide. Bad news is that Rice fell off. The good news is that Alabama already has five solid scores that they can count. So it's not going to hurt that much. Always a little discouraging mentally, though, when your anchor falls. These are the things you want to practice, though. And uh, it's, good for, it's good for a team to experience these kind of difficulties early in the season know that the others can step forward. You have to count on everybody if you're going to win a national championship. The Pierce had the low score, but we think that they will throw the score of Rice out. All right, the University of Florida Gators are on floor. This is Orly Smooch, the junior from Los Angeles. And Orly is a good one. She has been a tremendous asset to the Florida team throughout her whole career. So solid on every event. Very good competitor. Fun to watch. A little low on that last one. There's a second team All-American on this event. She's good. 
stood on every event, all around in every meet a year ago. Is that good or bad? It's almost like fine Waldo. It's a tradition. To look for it in every routine. No, it's just tradition. <laughs> Gina Rice got a 9.15 for that score is out for Alabama. Oh yeah. Very strong routine. Orly competed in every all around last year for them. It has the third highest all around in University of Florida history at 39.725. That's a high all around score. Look at the determination on her face. You can really see in slow motion just how much torque those Achilles take. When you block into a double back or a difficult skill, you've got to really punch well, hard. Florida scores are solid, but not outstanding. They're not getting the big numbers, but they all did pretty well. Right now, Lutz with a low score of 5. 7.5, 9.5, We are coming back. We'll get you caught up on the scores. We'll have more of the 2004 Super 6 Challenge after this. Back at the Super 6 Challenge, Alabama and Denver through two complete rotations. So numerically, they lead. The story in that rotation, Alabama bouncing back. Georgia, Florida, Oklahoma, and Oregon State with one rotation, but now Florida will be on vault, Georgia on bars, Oregon State on beam, Oklahoma on floor, Alabama and Denver get the box. So a chance to even it up here. Along with Kathy Johnson Clark, I'm Chris Marlowe, and we're going to pick up the Florida Gators. This is Katie Rue, one of the talented freshmen. She's from Reistertown, Maryland. Level 10 national champion, uh, last seven years. And so far, Florida's doing pretty well, particularly their freshmen easing into their collegiate careers. We mentioned Rhonda Fain, uh, their assistants, Randy Lane, Lewis Robinson Jr., and Lindsey Miner. So they put together a good staff, recruiting well, a program, as I mentioned, at the top on the move. Lichenko ball, the full twist, a little bit close to the horse. Not quite the height we've seen earlier in the competition from Georgia, who really blasted off the horse. He's cleaning up in the air. Not quite as explosive right here. Really need to block and take it up. See, her feet are just level with the horse. In fact, her head is below the level of the horse before her landing. So not quite as dynamic. Her teammate, Brianne King, led off, got a 9-7-7-5. So the Gators start with a 9-7-7-5. Evans got a 9-4-0 as we await the score for Katie Rue. So we're three in to Florida's rotation as we get set for Orly Spooch. How come Spooch didn't go to UCLA if she's from Los Angeles? I don't know. Solid recruiting. She went to warm weather, too. <laughs> she dragged to leave warm weather and go to cold. Better block, the different vault, the half twist off front layout out. Another common vault. You see often a little more difficult to land. You don't see the ground. But by the end of the season, you see a lot more stuck landings on this vault. Rue got a 9-7. So Rue got a good score. And we await Orly Smooch. So the Gators trying to pick up some points. King got a 9.775. Evans a 9.4. They would like to throw that one out if they can. Rue got a 9.7. Smooch is waiting for her score. And the Southeastern Conference Region Co Coach of the Year, Rhonda Fain, back towards us. Turn around, Rhonda, over here. Smooch got a 9.85. 9.85 for Smooch. So you talked about, what do they call that, amplitude or altitude? <laughs> amplitude. I guess it's a little bit of both, okay. but uh, amplitude is the word that we use in gymnastics. Good height off the horse. All right, here comes Samantha Lutz from Grove City, Ohio. Oh! Nice front pie. Woo. Very nice landing, but I have to tell you it's not worth as much. So they start at a deficit. It's scored from a 9.9. .9. 
so already a tenth of a point down. That's the importance of all these teams really trying to get their 10-0 vaults in there. She has a half twist to this. She's got a 10-0 vault. Can't, can't take away that landing. Haha, -ha, that puts a big smile on your face. Vault scores for the Gators so far. King, Rue, and Smooch. They'd like to use those three, Lutz and Dooley, if they can, and throw out Evans, who has the low score at the moment. Savannah Evans, a 5-2 freshman from Destin, Florida. And we're going to stay right with the ball. Lutz got a 9-7-5. So here is Aaron Dooley. I don't know if you remember this. Aaron yep. Dooley is a freshman right before the Super 6 Challenge. Went down with an injury. Yep. Broken leg. There you go. Full twist. Yurchenko, again, not as high as some of the ones we've seen. Very pretty in the air. So it won't get the huge score, but it'll get a nice one. It's such a nice technique. Very well-trained athlete. Legs together, a little bit low. As you can see, when they finish that twist and their head's below the level of the horse, it's a little bit low. We've seen some of the bigger balls finish above the level of the horse. Florida set four team records a year ago. They had eight All-Americans. Let's go over the bars for a moment. And the Georgia Gym Dogs are performing. A lot of excitement there at the uneven bars. This is typically their weaker event. And so they said they were really trying with their recruits to bring in good bar workers. Kinsey Rowe led off with a 9-8. Kupet's got a 9-8-2. And Ackerman fell. Ackerman fell at a 9.15. We're waiting on the score for Tomei. You're not used to getting up that high. It's a nice this Very nice this Actually, the weakest part was right at the beginning. The turning was so low. Timmy, the handstands aren't quite high. You're a little hollow and your toes hang behind. They don't go over your head. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's what's important right now. This is what's important. Coming out with a book in the next year, detailing gymnastics in the Southeastern Conference, particularly Georgia, rivalry with Alabama, and all the goodies that go with it. She was just telling her what it's all about. They got to see those handstands, and she was a little short. That's what she's telling me. Tomei went. We're waiting for her score. Tomei got a 9.775, and this is Kelsey Aronson, a freshman from Cincinnati. And Suzanne is excited about her freshman. story. She was a walk-on. She turned down some scholarships to some other schools, but she's worthy of a scholarship. Georgia wants to throw out Ackerman's 9.15 as we wait for the score for Erickson. She gets a 9-9. Nine -nine. A 9-9 nine -nine for the freshman, Chelsea Erickson. See what a landing will do for you? Yeah, that's a scholarship type score, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Kathy Johnson Park. And now we wait for Chelsea Bird. And she is worth waiting for. Senior from Little Rock. She was a second team All-American on this event as a freshman. Oh, you love that scare the high ball. That's really cool. I love that from the layer to the high. Aaron Dooley of Florida got a 9-7 for her ball to round out the scoring for the Gators. She's a little bit short on her handstands. It depends on how stingy the judges want to be. They seem a little open. So it makes a 
difficult is it's riskier. You put that knee here right in the vertical. You could go the wrong way. So it's really what they're looking for. Little step back on double layout. Very easy routine. She, she does it so effortlessly. So Georgia with some outstanding performance. Some outstanding performances on bars. Suzanne Yachtman likes what she sees, but up next, the Crimson Tide ready to roll. Stay with us. And John. Back in Tuscaloosa at the Super 6 Challenge, Georgia, after three rotations, has the lead, followed by Alabama, Denver, Florida, Oklahoma, and Oregon State. We're set for the start of the fourth rotation. Oklahoma on vault, Denver on bars, Georgia on beam, Alabama on the floor, Oregon State and Florida have a bar. This is your event. This is your event. Three times. Now you can run down there strong. The run's going to determine how high you get up off the horse, okay? You pop that thing full and let's nail it, okay? But strong run from the start, okay? Come on, let's be aggressive. Tip, let's get it. Steve Nuno, the former two-time Olympic assistant. The Sooners 18 and 11 a year ago. They've already opened in the Cancun Classic where they scored 195-150. And this is a building program. Chris, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to vault. I, I'm so pumped up right now. Yeah, Nuno has that kind of a personality. He gives you speed you don't have, power you don't have, just anything extra, he gets it from you. He's a, it's an excellent motivator, always has been. Of course, most people know he coached oh, Shannon Miller to two world championship titles, the first ever back-to-back -back world championship titles for Tip. an American gymnast. So he has an outstanding record. He's on, Tip, trying to do the same thing here. He really come wants on, to build Tip. this program. Come on, Tiffany. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Get it, get, get it. No! All right, Tiff! Atta girl, atta girl. All right. Steve Nuno is the head coach. Nielsen, Nielsen Savage, Jenny Rowland are the assistants. They're really doing a great job. This is the highest they've been ranked in the preseason, 13th. So they're pretty psyched about that. They're adding difficulty to all the routines. Yeah, the Big 12 has been dominated by Nebraska. Nebraska has won it six years, Iowa State once. The Sooners defeated UCLA last year. And... Uh, they are looking good. They did a nice job over on the floor exercise, put together some nice choreography. You can hear the applause in the background. Remember, there are other events going on as we're ready for a Sooner vault. Let's give you the Sooner scores so far. Cox at 955. Come on, Brittany. The bar got it. a 9675. Hostler 9675. Tamayo 9725. Willen a 975. Come on, Brittany, big ball. So contact. Come on, Brittany. Ready to roll. Come on, Brit. Come on, Brit. Get up. Get. Six. Beautiful. Oh. Very nicely right, done Brittany. in here. Great job. Great job. All right. All right, ladies. We'll give you her score in a moment. Brittany contract over to the beam. Chelsea Bird for, oh, for, for Georgia. And she takes a fall. Georgia is having a rough time over on balance beam. Whew. A lot going on in this arena. Yeah, and I'm not sure if that was the Alabama fans cheering that a Georgia performer fell off. No, it, there, there is so. a little bit of that coming on here, but they were cheering a score that came out from Alabama. All right, it was a performance they were cheering that we will see Gina Rice on floor. We'll show you that one. Yes, unfortunately, Georgia is really having some trouble here. Whether it's early in the season or it's a difficult, it's a difficult place to compete in. Marlene Stevens got a 9175. Smith got a 985, but then Erickson got a 925. And Bird has already had a slip. So Georgia in trouble on the balance beam. You gotta keep your hands down. You're right there. I don't know how to. You gotta hit down. You, gotta, you can't hit straight out your legs so that you don't get that. Just moments ago, the crowd going crazy. Gina Rice, her floor exercise.
first landing throughout the routine. Keep in mind, Georgia struggling. Alabama a chance to make it up with some points. Gina Rice, her routine. This was a beauty that garnered a 9.95. This is a great event for them. Continuing in rotation number four, Alabama is smoking. Alexis Briol, the junior from Virginia Beach, Virginia. She scored 9.9 .9 higher or higher on floor 14 of 16 times, Kathy. So she's consistent. She is one of the most dynamic tumblers in college gymnastics. Chelsea Bird got a 9.375 on beam, so Georgia having problems. Alabama's got Holder for 9.85. Valetti got a 9.325. Rice got a 9.95. Kite got a 9.90. So they want to throw out that 9.325 of Valetti if they can. And so far it looks good. SEC champions of a year ago, the Alabama Crimson Tide. Unlike last year, where they started off slower and built toward that second place finish, seems like they're starting off at a little higher level this year. More experience, the freshman class of last year. They only lost one senior, Kristen Sterner. She was an ace but plenty of experience and talent on this Crimson Tide squad. Brio, 9-9-2-5. So Folletti is the low woman at the moment, and this could really tighten it up. Fritzinger got a 9-7 on beam, but Alabama's floor scores are outstanding. Ashley Miles, here she goes. Now watch it. <laughs> Double layout. At 5 8, when you tumble high, you are way up there. She was the Southeastern Conference Board champion last year as a freshman. Among other things. How much does the crowd help you here? Oh. Immensely. Go higher, jump farther. Absolutely. <laughs> Especially on an event like this. Balance beam, you kind of have to learn to control it. Right. Still get, you know, pumped up by it, but you got to keep everything in check. Here, you can let it all go. Alabama has made its move. Fans want a 10. 
Grassley Miles. Miles. Crowd's not happy, but that's right. It's it's what she should have gotten. The great routine, very, very powerful tumbler. Look at the straight body on the double layout. Easy. Georgia consistently, or Alabama consistently does very clean, nice routines, and they're really adding some power and dynamics to the routines as well. Georgia. As we mentioned, was in trouble on the beam. This is Marlene Stevens. Missed the landing. And then Bird with a big, now check that. That's Fritzinger. Fritzinger with the stumble. And she may have hurt herself. So Stevens with a 9175. Erickson with a 925. And let's pick up Kinsey Rowe. They need a big score right from Kinsey. Boy, I hated to see that uh, stumble from Corey Fritzinger. She had a sprain, a high sprain of her ankle coming into this and it only trained three days. And only competed in balance beam here, so that definitely hurt. Kinsey Rowe is such an exciting gymnast to watch, particularly on uneven bars and balance beam. Been a very steady performer for Georgia throughout her whole career. And like all the Georgia seniors, just wants a team title before they leave. Unofficially, Alabama's, Alabama has registered a 49-6, a 49-6 on floor. So Rowe needs to hit here. Johnson Clark, I'm Chris Marlowe, Alabama. Outstanding on floor, it's fourth best all time in an apparatus. Crimson Tide takes the lead, Georgia, Oklahoma. Moving up into third, Denver, Florida, and Oregon State. Now Florida and Oregon State, Alabama and Georgia have the buys. Alabama will be on vault, Florida on bars, Denver on beam, and Oregon State on floor exercise. So we'll start with the Alabama senior, Warren Holdifer. Warren was a member of the 2002 championship squad, so she has a taste of that. She's been an excellent part of Alabama gymnastics. Now in her senior year, been very, very steady on both and floor. She had her career best 985 at the Southeastern Conference Championship. After two perfectly stuck vaults preceding her. Just a little too much adrenaline and boom. You gotta open up out of this pipe right here. Boy, she's she's high enough rotation enough. She needs to throw a half twist on that. Get a 10-0 start value. Easier to land. Hold of her third in the six-person rotation. Gina Rice led off the ball for Alabama. Let's take a look at it. It scored some good numbers. This was fantastic. She has such a beautiful presentation at the end. Boom! Arms up. Very pretty. 9925 for Rice. And then Dana Folletti, the sophomore from Chesapeake, Virginia, would go next. Another look at Gina's first. Look at that. Just sticks those feet in the mat and does not move. Yeah. 
Folletti got a 9-8. Holder for a 9-6-2-5. And so ready for Dana Pierce, the sophomore from Advance, Indiana. As a senior, I bet you didn't know she was voted Miss Congeniality. I did know that. You did, you did know that? You saw that? I did, actually. Can she stick the landing? Whoa! And that's a nice vault for Miss Congeniality. It was beautiful. She's got a big smile. Won't get quite the huge score because it wasn't as, as big in terms of dynamics. Watch where she finishes the somersault and the twist. But her legs are nice and tight together. A little bit of pike in that position, too. But a good landing. And that always counts for something. The only freshman to compete in every meet a year ago for Sarah Patterson. And we're set for the junior Alexis Brion. So Alabama energized by some great performances on floor, and they've carried it over to the vault. Boy, when momentum swings, it sure does. swings. Alabama's dual meet record a year ago, 10-7-0, 4-2 in the Southeastern Conference. They won the Southeastern Conference Championship with a 197-575. Pierce got a 9-8-7-5. And Brion set to go. And she was an All-American last year after taking most of the season to recover from ankle surgery. Still came back to All-American status. And we'll see why. Very powerful. There's that front, front pipe with a half twist. That makes it worth a 10.0, adding the half twist to the ball. The half twist really makes that ball. It's a little bit unusual. Frankly, it makes it easier to try to stick. You can see the landing as it comes. It just adds enough difficulty to raise that start value score to a 10. Alabama's vault scores so far have been very, very good. Not quite as good as they were on four. On floor, Rice, Folletti, Holdefer, Pierce. Right now, Holdefer is the low woman on the totem pole, but that score may stick, you never know. We'll give you Brion's score in a moment. Brion at 985. So Ashley. Yeah. Not bad. Yes, you're a you're a tough grader. Well, I, I would have taken a little bit more probably on the landing, but <laughs> that's why you're a commentator and not a judge. It swings, it swings. Let me tell you. Ash, yeah. Ashley Miles, the anchor, the final performer for Alabama on vault. And this is a potential huge score, national champion. Woo! Look how she comes straight down into the ground. Her height really adds to this vault when she's up there she is up there watch where she finishes the twist and the somersault way up above the level of the horse head above the level of the horse gorgeous and now Pendleton Aaron Pendleton the Florida Coast School record holder she's got a 10 in this event in the past Swinging well so far, a little short of the handstand. But just slightly. Nice big double layout. Won't get a 10 there, but still a good score coming. Miles got a 9-9-2-5 on vault. And Rhonda Fain looking for a big score from her star, Aaron Pendleton. She won seven bars titles a year ago. The crowd reacts on Miles' score, 9-9-2-5. The Florida Gators, Roots got a 9-2-2-5. But other than that, pretty good scores for Florida on bars. We're going to stay right here. Kristen Stuckey, the senior from Menomee Falls. Alabama, a 49-375 as we add them up unofficially. They'll throw out hold of her to another big round for Bama. Now Florida trying to play catch up. The Gators have been good, but not very good or outstanding so far. Stuckey, ready to go, a 9-9-7-5. She shares the school record. She's really pretty on this event. Nice long lines. 
She's had seven knee surgeries. Ouch. And still comes back for more. Pendleton got a 9.775. Low for her, but still pretty good. Most impressive, she hit every routine last season. Every single one. And she Thank sticks you. the landing there. Kristen Stuckey, a couple of years ago, the SEC Freshman of the Year. Three years ago, to be exact. He was a cover all the way. I think the coolest thing was when we saw her at the Super 6 Challenge. She hadn't competed on beam in three years. Yep. Competed for the first time at 9-9. Yep. Brought tears to everybody's eyes. It was really cool. I, I can't tell you how difficult that is to uh, get back up on the beam and compete that steady after so many years off. Beautiful landing on that distance. Well, the Gators looking to move up in the fifth rotation. A lot to be happy for. Waterhouse, Smooch, King. They'll try to throw out Lutz. Pendleton, 9775. And Stuckey, yes, a 9875. So a good apparatus for the Florida Gators. And hugs for their bars performances. All right. The Oregon State Beavers are up on floor. Their head coach, Tanya Chaplin, the assistants, Dick Foxel and Michael Chaplin. Oregon State ranked 11th in the country. They were 12 and 5 a year ago, 4 and 3 in the Pac-10. Their season high score was at 197. They've been in the NCAAs three of the last four years, just missed a year ago. It's a good program. And they're using that to fire them up for this year. Just missing last yep. year was really, really tough. And every day in the gym, they just remind themselves, we have to work hard. Everybody else is working hard. And when you can miss something by such a small margin, it inspires you. Tanya Chaplin, a teammate of mine. The World Championships back in 1981. Oh, wait, I'm not supposed there to say There you go. Here? Say it. Excuse me. Sorry, Tanya. But I was older than you, so I guess I can say that. This is a team that lost Elizabeth Gilson and All-American on bars, but virtually everybody else back. And... Oh, wait, I aged us further. Sorry, 83 okay. World Champions. Here we go. <laughs> Chrissy Lehman, sophomore from Reno, Nevada. Pac-10 champion on this event. What a 10 0 Pac 10s, and only the fifth OSU gymnast to win a conference title. Oh, no. Five tenths of a fall, five tenths of a point off for the fall, and a tenth of a point out of bounds. That's a costly. And, and they already have a fall right before here. Riccioli Hebron, a 9 2 2 5. So a tough couple of performances right in Lehman. See if she can get back on track here. What makes a good floor performer? I mean, is it speed? Is it? It's, uh, it's everything. Okay, a little bit of everything. everything. Um, you know, you have to be a dancer. Would be nice. Good choreography. Uh -huh. uh, but power, strength, endurance. Yeah, it's tiring, isn't it? Very to do, a, do an outstanding floor performance. They train for months to just get get routine ready so that they can finish with more difficult tumbling passes. And more and more, we're seeing more difficulty from these athletes. So the performance of the Pac-10 champion on floor, Chrissy Lehman, she had a stumble. We'll see what her score reveals after this. Alabama has the lead. Can the Georgia Gym Dogs come back? Stay with us. Unofficially, Alabama is our winner. The Crimson Tide posting a score of 196.725. It's the best Alabama score in an opening meet ever. So Alabama in the clubhouse, 196.725. Denver is finished. The race for second between Florida, Georgia, and Oklahoma. Oregon State also performing well. In the sixth and final rotation, Oregon State on vault, Oklahoma on bars, Florida on beam, and Georgia on floor. Ashley Kupitz, uh, Suzanne Yachlin describes her as a combination of finesse and power, which you rarely get those two in combination.
beginning, Suzanne really wanted to use this competition to get her freshman baptism by fire. Throw him in, get him going, get him some experience. Look at that. Uh, never done in collegiate gymnastics, as far as I know. Lay out front into double front. Extremely difficult. Takes a lot of power and good technique. Boy, she just pulled that out. Mistimed the punch. Managed to get around to her feet. But that first pass, wow. Let's go to the balance beam. Florida's Aaron Dooley. Florida in the running for second place. This was just moments ago. She's so aggressive on this event. Moves very quickly, very confidently. Far Florida on beam, one biff. Rue got a 9275. Smooch at 9875. King 985. Pendleton 985. So Florida scoring very, very well if they can keep it up here. Julie gets a 9925. Jamie Ackerman is in the midst of her routine, or just about set to start her routine, the sophomore. This is her top event. She's got a 995 to her credit. Good to see her back in the lineup. Second team All American on the bars and had ankle injuries at the end of last year, held her out of vault. She is one of Georgia's most dynamic tumblers, and look at that. Georgia really tries to push the limit on difficulty, really likes to show off the big skills, particularly on the floor. They want good, strong first and last passes. Great 
scores on four. And unlike years in the past, they're trying to do uh, more of a variety, different types of music, different types of okay, styles on first size. Girls. Come on down this way. Yeah, that's some bad luck. Started out and you had to catch up. Middle pass. Looked like the feet were slipping. Yeah, Pull out of it. Stand up. Had a fall at the beginning. Bad luck. Rowe, Erickson, things. Smith, Kupetz, nice Ackerman, all solid. They'll throw up Miller's score because she had the fall. Kenzie, you too. And Georgia's going to get Kenzie. a good floor score. It's not going to be nice enough in, in this mate. Alabama's got the win. One on ball, one on bars, one on me. All right. Moments ago, Kristen Stuckey on balance beam. Fifteen event titles for this woman a year ago. Unbelievable. But in Florida, really has some great scores. Going into hers, they have the one low score that they'd like to drop, but the rest are going nine eights and nine nines. How would you say Florida has performed in this competition? I think extremely well. Okay. A talented team, but not a particularly deep team yet. Not yet. A couple yet. more recruiting classes needed. Five freshmen dot the lineup. This is the gymnast you want in this position. She hit all her routines last year. Just for the record, Miller got an 8-5-5, so Georgia will throw out, throw out that score, but have five good ones to count. Scale, famous by Chelsea Memel, who just became the world champion on the uneven bars for the United States, which also does that scale. When you don't need the difficulty on your dismount, many of the gymnasts and a lot of the coaches are just going for the easier dismount to ensure a stick. Sixth and final rotation, Florida performing very, very well on the balance beam. That's good news for Gators fans. They'll throw out Katie Ruse, 9275, but everything else, outstanding. All right, when we come back, we'll catch you up on the final scores of the 2004 Super 6 Challenge. Alabama won it, but what about after that? Stay with us. Through three rotations, Georgia led here at the Super 6. Things turned in rotation number four. Ashley Miles and company, Alabama turning it up. Miles scores a 9-9-5. Look at the scores. Holder for Folletti, Rice, Kite, Brion, Miles. Meanwhile, on the beam, Georgia was blowing up. Three falls. Marlene Stevens, usually reliable. On the deck. Erickson, a 9-2-5, Bird, a 9-3-7-5. Georgia had to use two of those scores. The Jim Dogs going down the drain on beam. Final standings, Alabama, Florida, Georgia, Oklahoma, Oregon State, and Denver. Let's go down to Kathy Johnson-Clark on the floor. Kathy? I'm with Sarah Patterson, the coach of Alabama, number one today, early in the season, and your top score as an opener. It's great. I'm really proud of our ladies. We weren't perfect tonight. We started off with some jitters and a few mistakes, uncharacteristic mistakes. But I think what we learned is that it's kind of like a great football team in the third and fourth quarter. We just kicked it in and uh, in our last two events, and, and they really showed me that they can be champions. And we've said this all along. This, this team can be great. This is a little different philosophy, it seems, from years past. You've started off a little bit slower and then built. You're starting off with a bang. What does that mean for Nationals down the road? Well, last year we had six freshmen, and, and you know the adjustment period is much different. This team came in. Uh, 23 of our 24 routines were done by veterans. Brittany Como did a great job for us on the uneven bars after a tough position that she got put in. And you know, I, I just think that these ladies know what it's like to compete, and I think they really want to win. Well, talk about veterans. We have a great one right here. Gina Rice looks absolutely beautiful and more relaxed than I've ever seen you look. What's what's the key? Uh, I guess just experience, um, great coaches, <laughs> you know, working hard in the gym. What do you hope to happen as the season progresses? I, I know that you've taken on kind of a team leadership role, which is, which is new for you. Right. And uh, how do you see the team progressing through the Nationals? Uh, 
Um, well, I think that we can only get better with experience. I think this is great, you know, to start out, start off winning, you know, the Super Six, obviously. But I think that we still have a lot of learning to do, and I think that we're just going to grow and progress as a team, and hopefully, you know, be there at the Super Six at Nationals too. Great. Well, good luck to you. Great job tonight. Thank you. Back to you, Chris. Alabama has its best opening meet score ever at the Super Six, 196.725. Florida, its second best opening meet score of all time, 195.950. The all-around goes to Oklahoma's Brittany Konchak at 39.4. We hope you enjoyed it. The 2004 Super Six Challenge comes to a close. Alabama wins it. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. For Kathy Johnson, Clark. I'm Chris Marlowe saying so long from Tuscaloosa, Alabama, where the Crimson Tide serves notice. It is ready for a run at the national championship.